Ever since I built the first of these capacitor leakage testers from the December 1959 issue of Popular Electronics, I have wanted to build a, a better uh, tester for capacitor leakage, one that didn't have some of the problems that this one experiences. And let me zoom in on the schematic here and you'll see what I'm talking about. This tester connects directly to the AC line and although it does have a resistor and uh, diodes between the the uh, test terminals and the AC line, nonetheless this can be a fairly dangerous uh, tester and I built a version of this that allows you to switch between just the voltage across this capacitor or the voltage across the entire doubler in a video called DIY Capacitor Tester that uh, I posted uh, well, well over a year ago. I'm not sure if I remember exactly when. But recently I saw a video by uh, Restore Old Radios and it reminded me of my desire to build a better low voltage tester. And so uh, let me show you that video. So here is the uh, YouTube video I was referring to that reminded me of the DIY tester. It also reminded me that uh, Mr. Carlson had posted a uh, device that test capacitors for leakage at low voltage as well. Now, I don't, I don't know exactly how Mr. Carlson's device works, but uh, this one works by uh, producing a current multiplier using a transistor as a current multiplier to measure the leakage current through this capacitor. I looked at this and I, I wanted uh, actually a little more sensitive meter than this. I wanted something that would show a capacitor that would leak as little as uh, 250 mega ohms or, or maybe even higher. I tried this circuit and it wouldn't, I, at least I couldn't get it to detect a 250 mag leakage resistance. So I made some additional changes and uh, let me show you the uh, the tester and that I uh, wound up uh, prototyping and a little bit of the results. What I have here is a little breadboard that I've put together and notice that the there's a capacitor, it's our number five from that uh, video on uh, capacitors for tube circuits. Now I'm going to replace it with the capacitor that was uh, number three. By the way, this is the capacitor that was bad but had the highest leakage resistance. In other words, I think it measured about uh, nearly four uh, mega ohm of uh, leakage resistance. So at 250 volts. So I'm now going to disconnect that capacitor and see if I can connect this one. And watch the bulb. Notice it blinks as the capacitor charges. But once the capacitor is charged, the uh, the LED stays out. So this is still a work in progress, but I thought I would post it in case someone wants to do some experiments. I'll show you the circuit in, in just a little bit and discuss a little bit of the theory. But it's a very simple circuit. It just has uh, three resistors and two transistors and an LED, plus of course the 9 volt battery and some test leads. So Let's take a look at the circuit and uh, talk about how it works 
and how it might be improved and things like that. Now here's the, the uh, breadboard again back on the number 5 capacitor, the one with uh, uh, several mega ohms of leakage. So let's take a look at the circuit that uh, that we're using here. This is the circuit. Let me lay this down and get a little more light on it and then we'll uh, talk, talk our way through it. Whenever you say high current multiplier and you're talking transistors, you're thinking of a Darlington configuration. In other words, where the emitter of one transistor is connected to the base of another. And basically, the two transistors multiply their DC current gain. So a tiny base current gets multiplied into a very large collector current over here on the, uh, the output of this uh, transistor. Well, this circuit, because it has such high current gain, and because it only operates off a 9-volt battery, the LED doesn't by itself provide the right kind of sensitivity. So let's talk first about a few of the components here. This 10K resistor is just to limit the current into the base of this transistor. You put the capacitor across these terminals. If the capacitor is shorted, you don't want it to blow out this uh, transistor. So if you didn't have this resistor there, you'd have 9 volts on this point and, and ground on the emitter here. So you'd have a 9-volt battery between this base through this base to this emitter, and it would undoubtedly burn out these transistors. So you need something to limit the base current in case you have a shorted transistor. So that's what this 10K is for. And I'll be honest, I chose the 10K just because I had chosen a 1K for a limiting resistor on the uh, LED. Now, I just happened to pick an LED out of a bunch that I had on the bench. Uh, up there, you see a bunch of them in a box. I'm not sure exactly where those came from. I had them in a uh, plastic box, and I just dumped them out in there. Oh, a couple of weeks ago, and they've been laying there ever since. So anyway, I can't tell you much about the LED, except it certainly wasn't selected. And then the 1K resistor, as I say, is to limit the uh, LED current in case this transistor gets turned on very hard. However, this resistor is actually a calibration resistor. And I'll be uh, honest on how I did that. What I did was I put this resistance decade box across the LED. The idea is to shunt some of the current around the LED. A lot of people think that LEDs are voltage operated devices and they are, but if you pull the current down sufficiently, the LED will extinguish. So what I did is I put a uh, large resistor here. Actually, what I did was, you may recall when I was testing those mega ohm meters, I made up this uh, string of uh, 20 and 10 meg resistors to test those mega ohm meters. So uh, what I did is I went to the end of that. In other words, I put that entire string between here and here. And I looked at how bright the LED was, and then I adjusted this resistor. And at about 390 ohms, the LED was just uh, just on enough to, to be visible. What that means is that this uh, circuit will detect leakage uh, up to several hundred mega ohms. And you can decide whether you want to read the upper end of the scale or the lower end. For most paper capacitors, this is probably a sufficient value. At any rate, this is sort of the calibration resistor. And you're going to have to calibrate based on the gain of these two transistors, as well as the, the forward current of your uh, LED. So I won't tell you what value to use there. 390 worked for me. You may, uh, your results may vary. So, this is how the circuit works. A little bit of the 9 volts 
flows through the high value resistance of the capacitor into the base of this transistor. And then that current, of course, gets multiplied by the HFE of this transistor or the beta of this transistor. That current flows into the base of this transistor and then it gets multiplied by this transistor's HFE. And that is the collector current that flows through this uh, LED. And as a result, if there is virtually any resistance here, in other words, if it's anything other than a complete open circuit, there will be some conduction through these, this Darlington pair. And depending on where you have this resistor set, uh, remember what this resistor is doing. It's forming a voltage divider between the 9 volts, which is uh, feeding this LED, and the collector. So some of the current that flows through the 1K goes through the LED and some of it goes through this resistor. You adjust the ratio of those until the LED is extinguished at whatever value of high resistance you want. I chose to set it so that uh, it will sense about 250 meg of leakage. You could of course raise this resistor and it would sense even more. But then it starts to become sensitive. If you pick up the test leads, it'll, it'll read through the test leads and the LED will start to come on. Play with it a little bit if you're interested and see what I mean. But uh, this is your calibration point. So what are the advantages of this? Well, for one thing, it only uses 9 volts, so it's a lot safer than the DIY tester. The uh, these, by the way, are just 3904 NPN transistors. Uh, I just picked them out of a out of a bag full of 3904s that I had. I didn't select them for any particular reason. And of course, the rest of these three resistors and an LED and a nine volt uh, transistor battery. So that uh, is my latest version of the DIY capacitor tester much safer than the original high voltage one that was published in Popular Electronics. But nonetheless, slightly different characteristics. It doesn't blink at you like the other one does. And I'm not sure how high uh, this can go without it staying on all the time. But certainly when you leave these leads open, the LED goes out. So it does sense very small amounts of leakage current and provides a good way for testing capacitors before you put them in the circuit. As you saw, this number five, number three capacitor, which is actually uh, a, uh, a vintage capacitor, let's see, what is that, a 0 0.05 600 volt capacitor that I took out of a radio, a Halicrafter's radio, it turns out I didn't need to. This is perfectly good capacitor. And high quality capacitors will last a very long time. The problem with paper capacitors is the paper deteriorates. And even if they were a good capacitor when they were put in, after 40 or 50 or 60 years, they're not good anymore. So this is a neat way to test them. I hope you build your own circuit and try it out and give me some feedback on how successful you are at locating leaky capacitors to put into tube circuits. I'm going to post this right after the uh, video from uh, capacitors, testing capacitors for tube circuits as kind of a follow-up. And uh, I'm going to consider it to be sort of chapter two of that video. So, hope you enjoyed it. More important, I hope you actually will try one of these yourself. And you stay safe and have a nice day.